Today on The Deep Dive, we're taking a look at three steps to having a vibrant prayer life. Hi, I'm Pastor Tyler Hazelwood, and today we're going to look at three steps to having a vibrant prayer life, because God wants to speak to you. God wants to pour out even revelation to you. Some of the things that we've heard about in the Scripture, maybe we've heard from great ministry leaders, these are actually promises that God wants you to walk in. What if God gave you the greatest gift in the world? But instead of using it, you decided to hide it away and never activate this gift. It sounds pretty sad, doesn't it? This sad circumstance is an unfortunate truth for so many Christians around the world. So I want to tell you a little bit of a story today. Now, this isn't a true story or anything, but it's kind of a story that's been passed down from times to to different times. And this is one where there was a flood and God promised that he was going to save this man. And so he says, I'm going to save you. And the man says, "Okay, Lord, I trust you. And just at that time, he's on top of his house as the flood waters are rising. And just at that time, a boat comes by. And the man in the boat says, I've come to save you. And so this guy says, oh, no, I don't need you to save me because God is going to save me. And then another boat comes by and he says, why don't you hop on? And the man says, nope, I'm okay. God's going to save me. And then a helicopter flies over and says, grab this ladder, we're going to save you. And the man says, oh no, God's going to save me. And then he cries out to the Lord and says, Lord, why have you not saved me? And God said, I sent you all of those people. And sometimes we can just be a little bit hard-headed in our relationship with the Lord. I know that I found I can be that way from time to time. And sometimes I found that we can be praying for answers that we've already been given. So step one to having a vibrant uh, prayer life with the Lord is recognizing our need. We need to recognize our need for his presence. We need to uh, become like that deer who pants for the streams of living water. Step two is creating an atmosphere where we can receive from the Lord. We want to take away all of the unclean things that are in our heart, and we want to put on the new creation that we become. Now, if you say, I don't know about this new creation thing, but I'd like to find out. I'd like to find out what it means to be cleansed by the blood of Jesus. That sounds like such a crazy concept, but it's something that you can walk in today. So if you'll click this link, that will show you uh, the beginning steps to having a relationship with God, how to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior, because Jesus died on the cross for you. When he died on the cross, you were the person that he was thinking of um, as he took that beating. Now, if you do the first two steps that we talked about, so that's recognizing the need and creating the atmosphere, then I believe God is faithful to speak. I truly believe that if you will recognize the need for him and if you'll say, I'm going to remove all my uncleanliness so that I can walk in right relationship with the Lord. I want to take all of the dirt out of my ears so that I'll have the ears to hear him. If we'll do that, he's faithful to speak. But I believe the sweetness of your communication after that depends on the third step. And the third step is stewarding what you hear. Now, the dictionary defines a steward as someone who looks after something. Now, if you are not a good steward, then you're not going to be intentional about looking after what you've been entrusted with. But if you're a good steward, if you're someone who prides himself or herself on the job of being a steward, then you're going to be so intentional 
about protecting and looking after that thing that you've been entrusted with, maybe even using the thing that you've been entrusted with. And we've been given this amazing gift. You and I have been given the gift that we get to hear the voice of the Almighty God. And that's a gift that is hard to wrap our minds around, maybe one that we can take for granted from time to time. I know that I've done that before. I've taken for granted the fact that the creator of the world, this good, good father, the perfect father, perfect friend, who's closer than a brother, this amazing man wants to draw near to me. He wants to speak to me. And that's such a moving thing. And, and it means that if, if God says something, if the creator of the universe says something to us, then we can believe that is true. Sometimes the, the voice of the Lord will come to us through scripture or through uh, preaching, or maybe God will even say something to you, and you'll just know it in your spirit that that was the voice of God. You can believe that thing to be true. Sometimes we hear God speak, and then it's like we almost forget what he said the day after. And that's such a frustrating thing for us, and, and I imagine it's a frustrating thing for God. Of course, he's frustrated in love because he wants to see us walk in victory, but that's such a hard thing that God spoke literal truth into us, something that can't be shaken. You know, there are other truths that can be shaken, but the truth that comes from God is an indefinite truth. It's forever and amen. And sometimes we just forget what he says. If God promises to protect us, say we're struggling with fear, and we read in the scripture that God is our protector, he's our defender, and maybe even we're praying and we feel that the Lord has said, I am going to protect you, then we can take that to the bank. We can know that God is going to be our protector. Maybe we're struggling with finances and the faithfulness of the Lord has just been shown all throughout our life. And we still struggle, and we still struggle, and we read from the Scripture that God wants to bless us. He blesses the faithful. If all of that happens and we're still forgetting, then there's something from the Word of God that maybe we're not receiving. And so if we don't take it to our hearts, then it likely won't happen in our lives. But the great news is everything in the Scripture is a promise from God to us. It's just like if in the beginning that I was talking about that great gift that he's given us, there's something that we have to do. And my challenge for you today is receive that gift. Receive the gift of his word. Think back to maybe even the last thing that you heard from God. Maybe you're saying, I don't know. I don't know how to hear God's voice, but I heard it one time. Think back to that and think about how are you stewarding that word? My challenge for you is think back to the last word that God gave you and do something with it. Whether it means maybe you were struggling with fear and he said, I'm going to be your protector. Make that an action in your life that you're going to trust God to be your protector. Step one to a vibrant prayer life is recognizing the need. Step two is creating an atmosphere to hear from him. And step three is stewarding what you hear. I'll see you next time right here on The Deep Dive.